Dr. Eugene Lazowski's bravery in the unprecedented and unauthorized exploration of epidemic typhus saved the lives of over 8,000 Jewish Poles, establishing him as one of the most significant heroes of World War II. Dr. Lazowski theorized that suspending bacterial strains in Proteus OX19 could create a positive reaction to the Veal Felix test in a person who did not really have typhus. He discovered that the appearance of being sick could save a person's life. During the 1930s, while the Holocaust raged, epidemic typhus spread by the bacteria contained on lice killed an average of 750 people a day. Although a vaccination was made by Dr. Rudolf Weigel, very few members of the Jewish population were able to receive it. The Nazi soldiers, while attempting to save themselves from the disease, convinced themselves and many others that the Jews were the cause of the deadly bacteria. In 1939, when Poland was taken over by Germany, thousands of pamphlets were printed stressing the necessity of avoiding contact with Jews, who Nazis said are always dirty and covered with lice. Based on this propaganda and terrified of contracting typhus, Nazi soldiers increased the brutal massacres in concentration camps in an attempt to reduce the numbers of the infected population. When the Nazis found out that a Jew who was already in confinement had typhus, they would isolate them to await execution to prevent further spread of the disease. These people were subjected to cruel conditions and torturous killings. The cases of typhus increased faster than the massacres were ordered and carried out. The Nazis declared that no Jewish citizen who had the typhus disease could be transported to the concentration camps because they would expose the Nazis who worked there. Little did the Nazis know the threat of typhus exposure would end up saving thousands of lives thanks to the medical explorations of Dr. Eugene Lazowski. Born in 1913, Eugene Lazowski lived his early adulthood in the midst of World War II. He was 26 when he completed medical school and Germany took hold of Poland. He enlisted in the Polish army and served his time in the village of Rozwadow, where he worked for the Polish Red Cross. Upon his arrival to the small village, he realized that just beyond his backyard was the town's Jewish ghetto. Eugene was only allowed to treat the non-Jewish citizens, leaving the Jews without any medical attention. Understanding the severity of their situation, he dedicated the next few years to helping as many people as possible. He took an oath as a doctor to help people, and the oath didn't differentiate among people. There was no option for him. There was no thought process about should I or shouldn't I. A system was soon put in place that when a Jew was sick and in need of help, they would hang a white cloth on his fence. Because helping any of the Jewish people was not allowed, Eugene was forced to wait until night to sneak into the village to help those who had signaled him. Eugene worked harder than ever to provide support for those who needed it while cautiously avoiding the attention of his Nazi supervisors. An unusual encounter presented itself to Dr. Lazowski. A young Polish soldier who was granted two-week military leave begged Lazowski and his medical partner Stanislaw Matevelics to help him from going back to his line of duty. He was aware that if he deserted, he would put his family in danger, but he also knew that going back would most likely mean he would never see them again. The two doctors were shocked at the request, but a life-saving idea was born. Matavelix had already been working within the Polish Red Cross to enhance the typhus test to be given at home. During this research, he encountered Proteus OX-19, a negative staining enteric bacteria that reacts with a person's antibodies. Proteus OX-19 is the biggest red flag for diagnosing typhus. He brought his research to Dr. Lazowski, and together they discovered that a dead strain of Proteus OX-19 would still lead to a positive result for typhus. This information led the team of doctors to hypothesize that injecting a person with this bacterial strand would produce a similar positive result to the test without the patients actually getting sick. With their first patient desperate and his furlough coming to an end, Lazowski and Matavelix performed the test and sent in a blood sample. When the results came back, the Nazis, terrified of the disease, told the soldier to return home. It was clear that the artificial false positive test could be used as a form of defense against the policies of the German occupation government on a wider scale. Mm -hmm. 
Dr. Matevelix, afraid of Nazi suspicion, abandoned Lazowski, leaving him to perform the scheme on his own. Alone, Eugene worked successfully to distribute the phony vaccine. He began distributing this injection to any Polish patient with a suggestion of typhus symptoms. Non-Jewish patients who came to Eugene with an illness like a cold or stomach flu were injected with the dead strain of typhus and were told that the shot was just a precaution. For the safety of himself and his patients, the doctor never told the patients the true purpose of the injection that they were receiving. Within two months, so many new cases were encountered, he successfully convinced his Nazi supervisors that a typhus epidemic had broken out. Once an epidemic was declared, the area of the supposed infection was closed. Therefore, if Jewish citizens were inside that area, they were included in the quarantine and left behind by the German officers who declared them no longer available for transport to concentration camps. The Nazis believed they were utilizing the spread of typhus as a weapon to dampen the sympathy of the Polish population for the Jews, but Dr. Lazowski's efforts would eventually save over 8,000 lives. The new rule against the transport of typhus patients established by the Nazis proved crucial to Eugene's plan. Dr. Lazowski continued his work in Rosbadau and then traveled to 12 other surrounding villages, completing this life-saving exchange of a false positive with multitudes of Polish people who lived around the Jewish ghettos. The quarantined areas that Dr. Lazowski created had become safe havens for the Polish Jews. From 1939 to 1942, he secretly performed a private war on the Nazi soldiers. Lazowski has successfully exchanged weapons for intellect. However, the Nazis grew suspicious of Eugene's plan. They sent a medical inspection team to verify the disease within the patients Dr. Lazowski already deemed infected. A few doctors and several armed soldiers were sent to Rosbadau to see exactly what was going on. Always resourceful, Dr. Lazowski greeted them with drinks and a meal. Not long into their visit, and just before the tests were to be performed, the lead doctor became intoxicated and was judged unable to give the tests himself so he sent his younger associates to the hospital. The doctors, in fear of their safety, only drew blood samples, which would not be enough to expose Dr. Lazowski's life-saving actions. At the conclusion of World War II, Lazowski continued to practice medicine in Poland, but soon suppositions of corruption within their own department became too strong for the totalitarian officers. A German soldier, whom Eugene had previously treated, was aware that the Germans were onto a scheme and had planned on killing him. Lazowski and his family fled Poland and immigrated to the United States, eventually settling in Chicago. He earned a medical degree from the University of Illinois, where he later became a professor of pediatrics. His acts of heroism in Poland remained a secret until April of 1980, when he published his story in a Polish article after 35 years of silence. He wrote, I was not able to fight with a gun or sword, but I found a way to scare the Germans. After many more years of medical achievements, Dr. Lazowski retired and moved with his wife and daughters to Oregon. In 1993, Eugene published his memoir, A Private War. It was widely read, and seven years later, he returned to Poland with Ryan Bank, a Chicago filmmaker who documented his trip. When he arrived, he was welcomed as an unsung hero, and the following days were filled with celebrations and ceremonies. He was thanked by an entire town, and soon his story spread to the rest of the country. Dr. Lazowski is truly a hero in the utmost sense of the word. He risked his life to save others simply because it was the right thing to do. His story must live on so that future generations can learn from what he did. Eugene passed away on December 16, 2006, at the age of 92. The group of people who knew of Dr. Lazowski's heroism was small, but his impact was immense. With his selfless and unprecedented bravery in the exploration of epidemic typhus, Eugene saved the lives of over 8,000 Jewish Poles and established himself as one of the most significant heroes of World War II. Dr. Lazowski is one of the greatest men who ever lived. He defined bravery and valor while risking his life to save others, with no motivation behind these actions besides a pure love for humanity.